How's everybody tonight? Blessed, highly favored, anointed, appointed, armed, and dangerous. I'm ready to rock and roll. Because God is good all the time. Man, these chairs keep creeping up closer and closer. Pretty soon we might as well just turn them around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go somewhere. Anybody want to go somewhere? Amen. <laughs> I want to go somewhere. Let's go somewhere, Dad. Take us somewhere, please. <laughs> Psalm 119. Glory. Glory. Psalm 119. So more volcanoes are erupting. Now we got them in Guatemala. They're erupting all over. The earth can't handle the shaking and quaking. Exposing corruption. Remember, the earth is corrupted. And it's waiting, it's groaning to be turned over to the hands of God's children. That's me and you. Everything is being shaken, no matter what. In Psalm 119 and verse 1, let's speak it together. Blessed are the what? Undefiled. undefiled. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are the undefiled. So cursed are the defiled. Amen. Amen. Verse 2, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. That means consistently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments, I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. That means obeying it. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Undefiled. They're blessed. What do they do? How, do they, how are they undefiled? Because they keep his ways. They seek him with a whole heart. They don't oppose themselves in iniquity. They are consistent. Amen? Amen. They're cleansed by abiding in God's word. They're with obedience and endurance. Amen? Amen? They not only believe the word, they receive it and they execute it. I'm going to say that again. They believe it, they receive it, and they execute it. They're not just hearers, they're doers. They're teachers. Oh, yes. They're concerned about sinning against the Lord. It's not about sinning against man. It's about sinning against God. Those are called the undefiled. They're the blessed. Amen? Now, there are things, in other words, blessed are the undefiled who keep his way. Blessed. One of the things that the Holy Spirit was revealing and wants to release to you and I tonight is the area of things that are done in our life that cause emotional impacts. There are emotional impacts in our life. And there's something that when an emotional impact is caused in our life, it causes what we call spiritual whiplash. 
if you've ever been slammed in the back or hit blindsided, it causes a whiplash which brings damage to the body. And in this area, when there are emotional impacts in your life, in our lives, these emotional impacts cause a spiritual whiplash with a, a side effect. And people don't realize that, that there are three major emotional impacts that cause spiritual whiplash. And these are caused sometimes by life mistakes. Amen? They be caused by decisions that we've made. And these emotional impacts, we must not only recover, but we must move on from these. The three major emotional impacts in our life is guilt, shame, and regret. Guilt, shame, and regret. Those are three major emotional impacts. These are results of emotional impacts in our life. Everyone has gone through them. Everyone still carries them. These impact us for a long time. It's a matter of having dominion over them and cutting loose from them. So that their effect is no longer there. These emotional impacts start even as a young age. The devil seeks out children. Amen? Amen. He, seeks out, he sees, seeks out whom he can damage because he knows if he does an emotional impact, it's burned. When an emotion comes and it's so intensified, it burns into memory and stays there. It doesn't leave. It's there. It's affecting us. Psalm 121. Guilt, shame, and regret. Hallelujah. Psalm 121. We're going to speak this psalm. Is everybody there? Amen. I will what? Lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow, say my, where you see your, say mine. We're going to confess this. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps me will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at, my, at his right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. In other words, our help comes from the Lord. He can preserve us only if we are undefiled. Does everybody get it? Amen. Only through being undefiled are you and I allowed into the secret place. In Ephesians chapter 4. And the three major ones are guilt, shame, and regret. Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 17. Let's speak it. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past what? Being past feeling. Those are associated with emotional impacts. Have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you have not so learned what? Christ. You've not learned his ways. You have not connected with him. You've not realized the reality of his forgiveness, of his mercies, of his grace. This is where many people are still relying on themselves. 
They're still trying to build their own house. And the Lord says, if, you know, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. He said, you've not so learned Christ. Why? If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off. You put off concerning the former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, in other words, exchanging out thoughts. And that you put on the what? New the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and, and holiness. Again, these past feelings are emotional impacts which cause spiritual whiplash, just like a car accident, getting hit from behind or blindsided. It brings in emotional and physical pain. It brings fear. It brings bondage. It brings limitations on a person's life. They can constantly recall that moment. They may not, it doesn't come fully in vision, but if you were to slow things down real slow, you would see that anything that is associated with that event, it could be an accident, it could be rejection, it could be an area that, that something happened of a trauma, it could be any of these things that's still affecting that person. Again, if you slowed everything down very slow, that image would come up to them. Why? Because when there's an emotional impact, it is burned, and it, there's an image that is burned in your soul and in your memory. Some of the results can be a hardened heart, dull of hearing, false perceptions, can't see correctly. Could be physical pain, could be sicknesses. Many people get sick because of these emotional impacts. These major impacts, in, uh, they impair, one of the things that it impairs is your identity. It impairs your identity. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It impairs the identity of the individual where many have fallen into a lost identity or never have gained their true identity. Amen? See, to, in this arena, you may, you may say that you know your identity, but you must live your identity. And there's two different things. There's a lot of people that say they know their identity in Christ, but they don't live their identity in Christ, and it's because of emotional impacts in their life that have this result of what we call spiritual whiplash, which causes harm. It's spiritual harm. It shatters the soul. Psalm 119, in verse... God only knows. Sixty-seven. <laughs> we'll have to pray this one through. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Yes. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 67. <laughs> Is everybody there? Amen. It says what? Before I was afflicted, I what? Went astray. This affliction is associated with a spiritual impact. In other words, we were afflicted. Why? Because it's just like somebody who was driving down the road and they went through a stop sign or red light. That's called going astray. And you know what happens? Usually they get hit or they hit something. So in other words, accidents, God allows certain things, 
because we move away, we sway away from that protection. And then things occur in our life. And now these things that have occurred in our life, he's trying to get our attention to get back on track. So these emotional impacts sometimes are results of being off track, going astray. In other words, look what's what we call self-imposed. Amen. Before I was impacted, I drifted. <laughs> I was off course. Then what happens afterwards is guilt, shame, and blame. Or regret. Begin to take their root. Well, I should have done this. If I'd have only done this. Maybe if I'd have done that. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I did that. And the pain stays because it's an emotional impact until it's finally cut loose and removed or replaced. Amen? The word emotional is associated with feelings. In this word of emotional, there's a word called emotion. Amen? In the word emotion, there's a word called motion which means movement. It's called motion, which is a movement of time or a moment in time. So what happens in, in this emotional impact because it's burned in memory and it, it brings a still picture shot in our memory. It's taken out of time. It is no longer a movement, but a stalling. Is everybody with me? This is what these emotional impacts do. They stall because they're no longer associated with time because time is movement. These are no longer movement. They're associated with a specific time and event. So it's no longer moving. And it causes individuals to stall their movement. It causes individuals to sometimes try to move in another direction to avoid it. Again, these pictures are taken out of time and no longer movement, but a stalling or a delaying and sometimes a misleading out of the rhythm of God's timing. All decisions, mistakes, pains, guilt, regret, or shame have long-lasting effects not only on us, but on the ones we left behind in the flow of time. even the ones that we left behind in the flow of time. These not only affect our identity, but the ones that were left behind also. Every one of us has affected many people in our lives. But thank God for God's forgiveness and mercy. Amen. Amen. In James chapter 1, We have a tendency to try and rectify these things in our own strength. Amen. And it actually causes more harm. Again, unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Oh, hallelujah. James 1.21 Let's speak it together. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He's more interested in the natural face, not able to see his true identity because it's been emotionally impacted. For he who observes himself goes away and immediately does what? Forgets what kind of man he was. 
but he looks in the perfect liberty, uh, the law of liberty, and does what? Continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in whatever he does. And if any among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his or her tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is what? Useless. Useless. Pure and undefiled religion from God, before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Again, we must remove ourselves from the stalling moments of time. Remove ourselves from the stalling moments of time that are connected to pain and shame and regret. And we do this by the word of cleansing and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We do this by the word of cleansing and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One of the first things that must happen is we must forgive. Amen. We must forgive. We must forgive. Everyone say forgive. forgive. We must forgive. We must forgive ourselves. And we must forgive everyone that we've harmed. And even forgive the ones that harmed us. Now you may say, well, why would I forgive the ones that I harmed? So God can move on their behalf. Because first of all, they are probably trying to retaliate towards you. They're still holding things towards you. So you want to forgive the ones that we've harmed. Why? Because then it can move them away. It can move, it can now dissolve that arena that's been stalling us, putting limitations on us. Everyone has made mistakes. Those of us that had children, we've done harm to our children by being an addict. We've deserted them. All kinds of things. But again, we must forgive ourselves, forgive the ones that we harmed, and forgive the ones that harmed us. So that that movement can start again. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Again, forgiveness of self and others so the uh, realigning of our identity can be reestablished as a new creation in the divine nature. And then is, once that begins to happen, then we are connected again to the future, cutting loose the past. Again, we are connected to the future, cutting loose the past, but so many people have a hard time forgiving. Forgiving. Amen. Spiritual whiplash connects to the old man of, of sin. It brings blindness, bitterness, offense, rejection, and it's always looking to get fed. And everything you do, any kind of movement or action that you're trying to advance, the enemy will re try to release that to you to prevent you from moving forward. That's why people constantly repeat things. They fall into cycles. Same thing. It's like, man, you're doing that again? You're going through that emotion again? It's never been cut loose. You're still grumbling, complaining about that? In other words, now it's being fed. It's being fed. It must be fed to maintain activity. And if it ma maintains the activity, it's going to stall it's going to delay our growth. Matthew 18. Some people have been whiplashed and don't even know it. Or they're in a whiplash state of being. Matthew 18. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse 6. Even the word tells us that if you take communion and still hold forgiveness, you can become sick and die. People don't even realize they're still holding on forgiveness and bitterness because they really haven't forgiven. <clears throat> 
In verse 6, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to him, take heed and beware of the what? Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Snap. <laughs> That's got a plan. Amen. Verse 6. Can we try this one more time? But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in, who believe in me to what? Amen. To sin. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, but woe to the man by whom the offenses comes. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it away from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now, I don't want to see people showing up next Bible study or gathering with a patch on your eye and one hand and one foot. Amen? That's not what he means. These emotional impacts, again, the enemy starts with the children. He goes after the children. Especially when there's a, a divorce in a family. The children are affected. Amen? When there's addiction, parents are addicted. The children are affected. When there's poverty, when there's death in the family, children, the children are affected. When there's abuse, physical or sexual abuse, it causes a child to fall into a place of bitterness. It brings an emotional impact on them tremendously. And they grow up, they'll become, they fall in a place of blame, shame, and unforgiveness. What's happened is not only their soul is shattered, but their identity is shattered. Because they look at the elders in the area of guidance. And when there has been shattered guidance, they lose trust. Amen. Then they pick up false identities. Does everybody understand? Amen. That's why it's important, even though this stuff happens, that there's one of the parents that's leading the children correctly. Amen? Yeah. Guidance. Insecure identities, you know. They, they search out identities, but they search them out in wrong places as they begin to grow up. But the mercies of God are released when parents and their, the overseers become the first, first fruits. Or the individuals become the first fruits of Christ. Things begin to change because there's a new identity they're able to look at and see a change. They see this happening. But if an overseer or a parent stays in that same condition, sometimes they never recover from that until they find Christ themselves. Amen? In James 1.16... James 1.16... To be okay. Do not be what? Deceived. Deceive my brother, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of what? First fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man 
The wrath of man what? Does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. You need to open your Bible and read with me. Amen? Therefore lay aside all that filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to what? Save their souls. Save their souls. Wow. In Christ's first fruits, then what happens, uh, God is able to release, amen? amen? He's able to release the impartations of the things as us as being an example. He's able to release these things and, and install, open their eyes and draw them. And in this, there is a, because the soul becomes, what I want to say, fractured. A soul becomes fractured in, in the, the, the loss of identity that happens. Amen? So they're going to look with, in places to try and find identity because they're looking for you and I are an overseer or a teacher or someone else. They're looking for someone to grab hold of identity. Then they grab these identities of, of player, famous sports people or whatever it may be or, um, uh, or uh, heroes or whatever it may be, but they're not Christ-like unless some of them are Christ-like. Then they realize and there's an impartation to them. But you and I as first fruits... In Christ, as first fruits, we are able to release others from fractured souls of emotional impacts, resulting in spiritual whiplash by, again, forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key. Forgiveness. Everyone say forgiveness. Of course, this cannot happen unless there's repentance also. <laughs> there must be repentance. So we've got forgiveness, repentance, and of course, releasing truth. For you and I and everything that we've done and everything we've been through as a new creation in Christ, we have a B.C. and an A.D. life. So in this, we want to come to a place where our first step, our first stop in our life is always honesty, and it stays that way. It stays there. When we drift from honesty, we're opening our door for an emotional impact. Amen. That's why it's so important to be consistent. Again, when we drift from dishonesty, we begin to open the door for an emotional impact. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Oh, happy day. Welcome to Tuesday night training. Amen. We either learn or get burned. <laughs> God is trying to bring us to a place where really we get cut loose and free. Twelve, twelve. Therefore what? Strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be what? Healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become what? Defiled. Wow. Become what? Defiled. Now we just talked about blessed are the what? Undefiled. 
So if a person becomes defiled, they become cursed. Lest there be in any what? Fornicator. Or profane person like Esau. Who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Wow. Think about this. Esau, in his birth, was spiritually, uh, emotionally impacted. Do you remember what happened? There was a battle of coming out. Who was coming out first? And then what happened? His brother deceived him. Look at the emotional impact. The end result was he didn't have no identity. He didn't realize what his connection was to receive from God. And so he sold his birthright looking for his identity because he'd been whiplashed by spiritual impacts or emotional impacts. Does everybody get this? Oh, hallelujah. Now you may say, well, this is according to the word of God. Well, that's how it happened. <laughs> These are the things that happened according to the word of God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Uh, let's see. Verse 17. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was what? Rejected. For he found no place for what? Repentance. Though he sought it diligently with tears, but he never got it. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so, much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. Again, in this, we are to strengthen others. And putting them on the path of Christ. We must be an example of humility. We must be an example of consistency. We must be an example of Christ's character. But without consistency, how can anyone, how can someone trust us? God can't even trust us. Amen? Ephesians 4.25 Ephesians 4.25 Emotional impacts called spiritual whiplash. Oh, glory. Verse 25, is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another, being angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the, nor give place to the, nor give place to the, the devil. Hmm. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor right, working with his hands in what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. <laughs> Even as God... In Christ forgave you. Putting the old away and making room for the new. Psalm 40.
Psalm 40. You know, it is very good to review in these areas. In other words, we go through areas and emotional attachments. Amen? And these emotional impacts can have multiple emotional attachments to one emotional impact. You can have multiple attachments to it. And it is very good for us as believers because it says that we need to expose the hidden things of shame. Some of us are still have shame on these areas. We still have regret and guilt in all of these areas. And those areas that you sense these things, you need to go to these, look at these places where these emotional impacts have started. And these decisions that we've made, things that we've done. First of all, forgiveness. Repent. It brings the blood. Because the Spirit will not have access without blood. It must be the blood of Christ applied, and then the Spirit is access. In all areas of our life. So many people are just skipping through life as a Christian and never really being free. It's called Christian management. Amen. Instead of freedom in Christ. So they portray to be Christians, but they're really living a life of management. They're not free. Because they're really never taking the time to do a self-examination and get freed. Or they're still in the blame game. Amen? Amen. Everybody okay? What did I say to go with Psalm 40, right? Psalm 40. Verse 1. Amen. Let's speak it. I what? Waited. I waited patiently. In other words, I endured. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock, which is the anointing, and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in what? Many will see it in fear. Many will see it in fear. And will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Many will see in fear and trust as they see your turn. As they see your consistency. As they see your new conduct. As they see that you go, go back in that cycle again and repeat the same old stupid things. Because of these emotional impacts and maybe because of laziness, not willing to go there and take the time to do the examination and get cut free and come out of management and get into freedom. Amen? Amen. Ecclesiastics 3. Again, these, in, these places of emotional impacts are stalled images in time. And they're connected to us. And it's like dragging something. Like the ball and chain type of thing, you know. Dragging. No matter what you do, you, you just can't advance. You have that hard time of advancing. Until you're cut loose. Starting in verse 1, Ecclesiastics 3. Is everybody there? Oh, hallelujah. To everyone, everything there is a what? To everything there is a season, a time for every. Purpose, Ecclesiastics is right after Proverbs, just in case those are looking for it. Ecclesiastics is right after Proverbs. 
Asneziastics. <laughs> yes, yeah, you. Asneziastics. Sneeze your way out of that one, huh? All right, is everybody there now? To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn. A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. There is always a time and season in our life. We stand in the presence of time. And we battle against voices of evil influence that cause us to change course or alter identity. Then what happens, one thing we don't want to leave is a legacy of pain and shame and regret and blame. We want to leave a legacy of peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Why? Because these are caused by emotional impacts and spiritual whiplash. It is truly time to forgive, forget, repent, and grab hold of Christ in the future. And I want to close it, Philippians 3. You know, people are still carrying sorrows of death things that occurred in their relationship, loss of jobs. They're still blaming everything. Amen. Blame is not the real game. Repentance is. We must take responsibility. And search these things out. Believe me, the Holy Spirit is always trying to expose these things to us. Every time you react, there's an image that was brought up before you did it. Amen. You just didn't pay attention to it. Again, if you could slow time real slow, you would see this image come up. And because of this emotional impact is that image that stalls our time, our growth and movement. It's still stagnant. In verse 13, Philippians 3.13, let's speak it. Therefore I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, what? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the what? Same mind. Now listen. Think about this. How can we become of the same mind if we have all these spiritual impacts that people are still carrying with them? It makes it very difficult to be like-minded with Christ and one another. We will not see the things that God wants us to see. And the greatest desire of a father is that his children see what he sees. Amen? Because it causes a flawed perception in our lives. We want to be cut loose from this. We want to remove those images. Amen? Amen. It's time. 
Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Remove grudges. Remove offense. Remove all of these things. Expose them. Go to the roots. Cut them loose. Repent for them. Forgive everyone you've hurt. Forgive everyone that's hurt you. And forgive yourself. But search these things out. People are still holding on to things when somebody had an accident in their life, hit by a car. They still drive in fear when the same thing's going to happen. See, when there's fear there, because fear is that fruit. Fear is that fruit of the emotional impact. If there's a fear there, you know that that is still there. Because God's not giving us the power of fear, but what? Love. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but love and what? Power and what? A sound mind. So if, where there's fear, you know there's still connection to a spiritual impact. Anywhere there's fear. You know, some people can't get healed because they're still holding on to fear. Whatever it is, forgive. Forget, move on, cut loose from these things. Search them out. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, we just take this opportunity. We repent for any area where we have been, we have been hurt. <clears throat> we forgive everyone that's hurt us. We forgive everyone that we've hurt. And we forgive ourselves because you forgave us. So Lord, we commit it all to you. We ask that you'll examine us and bring us to that place where we can do a self-examination and be cut loose from all of these things of people, places, things, events, accidents, traumas, and betrayals. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>